We found the turtle. He's back. I think that's the one I saved. They're curious about each other. No bark. No bark. I don't know what that thing is in the front of her. It's a weird thing hanging out. Is that a backwards penis? What is that thing? She wants to trust us, but every time Zika passes by, she goes in her shell. So cute. Like she's curious about us too because she comes out. So I mean, she's curious about us or him. I don't know. With that thing sticking out in the front, that might be a him. This is my tree that gave me fruit this year, and I just noticed it now because I don't usually come back here by the shed unless I have to go to the shed or play with Zika, but I usually don't walk back here. So I've got lots of fruit coming in, but a lot of the birds have gotten to the fruit. There's still some on this side, but I'm afraid the birds are gonna get to them. I have some good ones over here. Look, this one has half eaten. I don't know what to do. Maybe put like a bird net, but that'd be hard for me to get off later on. Took some out, but I don't know. This one, this one is all like eaten up, but maybe I'll give it to the chickens today. Let's see, this one is eaten up. And not only just birds, but there's like, there was a wasp, but see there's, some, there's a wasp there on that one. See the wasp? And they eat the nectar from the fruit. So I don't know how to keep that from happening. It's called homesteading as you go 101 <laughs> because there are things that I don't know. Tree doesn't give me fruit every year, but I don't know because maybe it was because I fertilized it in the winter time. And I think that's probably what it was. And I have to do that in the fall. But what's the point if all the fruit is gonna be eaten by the wasp and the birds so i'll give some of these to my chickens today so anyway i'm on my way to do my street walk with sika which disappeared for me I'm over here going because just harvested this but i'm gonna cut these off because i'm gonna make a stir fry today and if i wait too long this was already ready to flower even though it tastes delicious but i'm gonna go and harvest these small ones because I really want to make a stir fry today. So all I'm going to do is snip those from here. Okay, just so you see, I mean, I have other things. I have peppers in my freezer. I have lots of stuff. So this is just some part of what I'm going to be cooking today. So I have some kale. I have some broccoli florets. And I'm going to mix this up and make a nice steak stir fry stir today. By the way... These are my potatoes. These were miniature potatoes that I planted last year and I did get a harvest. I, and I cleaned out of the weeds the container and there were all these little potatoes in there, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. There's a little cardinal here. Let me see if I can get him out this way. He's stuck in there. He doesn't know how to come out. I don't want you in here. Okay, girls, no more drama today. I had to bring my plants, my garden plants indoors. You can see they suffered a lot last night. And I'm in the garage right now and I have this big window. I took the curtain down in the winter time so that I can put my plants here, but they were outside. I didn't think it was gonna get that cold and it got super cold last night and some of them got pretty sad so I put them here this morning so they have the sunlight and they got the heat of the garage and hopefully they will make it on my way to feed the chickens in the coop we still have an hour of foraging time but look what happened here something swooped down from the air look at all the feathers see all the feathers here this is Avi's feathers. Something swooped down and tried to grab Avi, but Avi ran in front of the screen and then Sika jumped up and tried to bite through the screen, whatever it was, and Avi was able to get away. Got them in the coop now. I think I'm gonna bring them some treats because they're traumatized. They went inside, they went inside the coop. They don't usually go in the coop at this time, but they are traumatized. So scared right now. 
They're both in here scared as heck. All right, you're okay. I just put some food outside for you. I was gonna leave him alone. Give him some fresh food and some water. She got a good dog. She won't want to fight for her chickens. She's like, the only one that can eat the chickens is me. Look at this. She's, she's playing with all of the feathers. If it wasn't for Sika barking and running up to the porch, Avi ran over here. And the thing, I guess, let her go around here. There's some feathers here. But I saw this thing try again around here. And Avi just ran in there and got away. See, there's some feathers there. Sika and I, we are at the park. And this is the beautiful butterfly garden that they have built here. This is what we found. Sika found this. It's like a little tortoise shell. But oh, the tortoise is dead inside. Little baby's dead. This is really early for me. This is like the earliest is like when the park opens. So I wanted to do the trails first because she does better. Like she relaxes at the trails. But there was nobody here. I was the only one. And I started walking the trail because that's what she wanted to do. And just when I was walking there, I was able to take a side trail and get out and walk to the park because there was this big guy. I mean, this guy was huge by himself with no dog. And I didn't know where he just came out from the woods. When I looked back, I'm like, where's his car? Because there was no car around here. So I said, you know what? Let me go because I don't want to be in the woods by myself. <laughs> That's why I ended up doing the park walk. And the park walk has been good for her. I could see the fruits of my labor paying off. She got here she, when I was at home. I said to her, we're going to go hike and we're going to go take a walk. She was excited. She jumped in the car. When we got here, she was, she looked around and she was, her tail was going. She was happy. And then the whole time we were walking, she wasn't stressed. It's a different type of energy. She was cautious, but she was excited. Then when she saw two golden retrievers walking across the street, she was super excited. Her tail was going. It was like she wanted to meet the dogs, but I wouldn't do that because it was two older people and those dogs are big and I don't know if they're going to pull. So I didn't want the dogs to knock them down. I was focusing on her not barking and she did really good. So I did give her a treat for that. She just did her wolf like this, but when I told her no bark, she listened. It was actually the other dogs started barking crazy at her after a while and she still didn't bark, which I thought was amazing. And then, and then it got difficult for me because she wanted to go walk the trail where the goldens were she wanted to go smell their with the trace that they left so she was pulling me pulling me pulling me all the way over there and i had to let her go smell and that's what this whole thing is about okay look how happy she is you have to get back home and do my taxes and this is why i'm here because i need her to sit still for a couple of hours today so i can really do concentrated work at a table and she just constantly like wants to go out wants to be outside and i uh, hey, hey. Are you eating the treats? Oh, no, no, no. You can't do that. Hey, there's a guy. Okay, there's a guy. There's a guy walking around over there. I saw him walking before. I'm so busy with my vlog, I forgot to saw her. No bark. Okay, no bark. Good girl. No bark. No bark, okay? No bark. All right, so guys, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to get to walk. No bark. No bark. No. No. Look at all the people here. She's like barking at them. She's excited. Look at her tail. She's enjoying this. She's not pulling me. But no, no bark. I have to take my shoes off, but I have a, a thinner sock today, so I'm better with my hiking shoe. The good thing about this leash that I have for her is I can put it on the seatbelt so I can have my door open and she can't like, I mean, she can get out, but um, I have to be watchful, so. But that keeps her in here. So I'm gonna give her this. She did really good today. wire all around the bottom of my fence so my chickens can get through but guess what they get through so I'm picking this uh, wire up because it's hard to weed whack 
with the wire here. I've got to maintain this property and chickens, they're just going to be, have to be watched. One of the things that I'm doing today is getting this compost more organized. I've had it several different ways in the past, but it's my source for all my trash and a lot of leaves I have here and it's just not working for me. It's a mess. I have one over here resting and then one that I use, but I really do because with the garden, I really need more. So this whole area here is going to be compost. And what I'm gonna do is remove all of this here. I have some zucchini actually growing from my compost right now, but I'm gonna start spreading this out. And then I also have some papaya trees that are growing from my compost. What are you doing? Are you drinking dirty rainwater? What are you doing? All right, so that's my job for today. Then I wanna clean out the garden because there's so many weeds in there. Hopefully I will get a little bit cloudier today so I can get this work done because it's been super, super sunny. It's hard to do that in the sun here. I'm opening a hole to China again. All right, so I have this stuff in the sun. It's just gonna break up. And that's what I was using here to kind of block this from any animals getting into it. But with the sun, it just it just becomes nothing. <laughs> so I'm trying to pick up all of the little tiny pieces because this is going to be my compost for my garden. And I don't want none of this plastic to become dirt in my compost. So I'm trying to get all of the little bits out that I find. It's a tedious task, but it's got to get done. All right, I got the box out. So now I got my rake. And I'm going to try to blend all of this together. Then this is the old slide from my playground set. This is going to be build a wall here. That's what this is going to do. And then I just have to put some of those end pieces. I got lots of stuff done today with the garden. I'm pulling the weeds out. I still got more weeds I got to clean out. And then I got to, I still got some broccoli, lots of kale. I still have to do the weeds over here. And we're going to get rain tomorrow. This is what the compost looks like. I got the papaya growing here. This is going to be my compost. This is where I'm going to put all the chicken manure here and anything like vegetables and stuff that are rotting from the garden i'm going to put them here these are all my mustard plants which are dead so i put them here i put my buckets here because this is where i'm going to grow my lettuces over here to so get a little bit of shade in the afternoon I have some squash that grew here in my compost more lettuces this is for weeds that's a papaya tree that i'm going to replant so that is looking good and then over here, I put this, but I think I'm going to switch it over to this side and put that over here where it was. I'll do that tomorrow. Is This is going to be my herb garden. I'm going to have that on this side and then this over here. I filled more dirt inside my barbecue, my old barbecue. That's my potting thing. So I put all the pots that were old in there. For the old compost is, I'm just going to use this for the kitchen stuff. This is going to get planted with some flowers and plants this year. And then I have a secondary trash container. I have a water container, which I'm going to switch out this summer with the barrels. I like to have emergency water on hand. So I got two and I want one more. So I'm going to be redoing this section here. And then this, um, I'll just put it somewhere else. So I'm still going to be cleaning this up in the next few months. I have some more pavers over there piled up that I can use in that area there. Hopefully the grass will grow here because Sika has been digging holes and I've been filling them. And then I put this thing here, this metal, so that she could stop with the holes. So you see my pavers have lots of weeds and I have to pull all of the weeds. And then I want to put the sealer on. That's another thing I got to get done too. Ready, set, go. Almost a year since I had my accident, where already the beginning of April, I had my accident in the, first, the second week of April. So it's, it's a big blow for me to 
be so behind because I was not able to do anything last year and you know my friend came down and helped me do some things he took the play down the, the playground set for me he um, you know prepped my mower so that I didn't have to do a lot of stuff and go to mechanics and stuff so he set those ready for me and just a lot of stuff that he did for me but um it feels like I've I'm so behind you know what I'm saying and but yet I'm not, but I am. I've been working really hard in the house over January and February, getting the house inside organized. And now I got the patio organized. And there's still some things I want to do, like this shelf that's over here with potting stuff. I didn't have a place for that in the garage, so that's why it's here. But this is stuff I do use when I pot. But I do have a shelf in the garage that has some stuff in it that I could rearrange better. But I haven't had a chance to do that. Once I do that, I know a lot of this stuff can go in that garage. So, and I will probably just maybe put some plants on that shelf or maybe remove the shelf. I don't know yet what I'm going to do there. It's getting dark. I'm going to make myself a sandwich because I'm super tired. I got to take a shower and I got to feed my, my animals. Tomorrow, I got to get up super early because the RV is getting serviced tomorrow. It's going to be an, a pretty much a four hour thing. Tomorrow's going to be the first day that this little dog is going to be alone in the house with my cat because I'm going to be in the mechanic for like four hours tomorrow to get the RV fixed and get it ready for the season because I want to start traveling with it locally for now with her. You can see my hard work is paying off because she's not scared of the mower anymore and noises don't scare her as much. I get inside. You know it's time to go inside for the night. You want me free all day. Coyotes are gonna get you. Yep. Get inside. Come on. Honestly, girls, it's getting dark. You gotta get inside. You're gonna go inside. Come on. Yeah, you gotta go inside now. Yeah. Right, come on, Haven. Yeah. So nice to be out, right? But it's very dangerous. You gotta be inside. Come on, Avi. Avi, you're eating. You're eating too much. You're getting too fat. Come on, Avi. Come on. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. Shh. Make such a fuss. So I'm here sitting in my porch editing this video that you guys are going to watch and I just wanted to update you on the tiny house because last week I did not do a post because I was going through legal matters with the people who are going to be doing the tiny house for me. So I just want to give you a quick update because I know some of you are following me for that. So I want to let you know what's happening. I finally settled with the company. I um, signed my contract October. 10th and I wired over $15,000 cash over to the company that was supposed to be building my tiny house that was last year and they deceived me as far as they said they were licensed in the county and they were deceiving me and they were holding my money I, I, I gave them $15,000 
and they were holding my money during the holiday season and they kept like they kept delaying things and things were getting delayed and then I started to get involved with the county myself and finding out that they were lying to me okay so when January came the holiday came and I didn't worry too much about it and I thought okay well they, they, they might be wanting to delay this a little bit because they have other work and they don't want to tell me so when January came around we had the whole problem with the septic issue because originally I was going to connect the septic to the tiny house to my house and that wasn't going to work a lot of people said to me that was not going to work so the county had to come out and issue me a whole new permit for septic so that was the month of January finally in February I saw them also coming with lots of delays and a lot of issues that um, that I felt that at this point I was done with so February and March I was at them always on top of them always always and I was starting to keep records and when I looked back on all the records of all the things, you know, God was putting in my heart, you got to go to court, you got to do this. So I typed up a motion for the court and I know how to do this stuff. It was very long and it's got all the exhibits. I mean, it took me a good probably three days to do the whole thing. And I prepared it and I was ready to bring this to my attorney. I called a couple of attorneys. Some of them don't handle these kind of issues with contracts. Oh. So I didn't tell you that because I was um, because they kept telling me they were getting the subcontractors and the county was like, we need the subcontractors, we need the subcontractors. I finally came down and then I said, you told me that you say you gave the, you gave the county the subcontractor, but the county's saying no. So all of a sudden he calls me up and he's like, we're canceling the contract, and I'm like, what? You can't just cancel a contract. The contract doesn't just doesn't protect you; it protects me. I've been in this for six months. So I, that's when I did the, the court exhibits and all of the stuff, plus all of the financial documents that we're going to have to produce to the court, um, proving that there was no fraud, because I do think there was some fraud in there. I can't tell you the name of the, 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 the builder, although they are a Florida builder. And I can't do that because the agreement that we signed when we settled, and we settled out of court, um, was that I was not going to be able to talk in social media or anything about about their the company, right? So I signed that. We settled. They did pay me a settlement amount. It was a good amount for the seven months that I was into this. Um, it was a very good amount, actually. So not only did they return back my initial fifteen thousand dollar deposit, they also paid me the wire transfer fee that I paid when I wire transferred the initial money, and they also paid me. Um, a good amount of money for the seven months well al nearly for the almost seven months that I was um, sitting waiting for them and that's because now I have to start over okay so that was also part of my whole um, procedure with the court that was the motion that I was filing because I was going to have some losses for my business because of the things that they were doing so uh, it's a good thing that we didn't have to go to arbitration. I don't need an attorney for arbitration. I can go by myself. But they knew that they were going to be spending a lot of money in court. And the evidences that I had against them were pretty significant. There were several statutes for other statutes that contractors have to abide by, especially when it comes to down payment and applying for permits and things like that. And I was able to present those to them in my motion. Um, and I do believe that that is the reason why when they realized that they had a lot of things going against them and this is the reason they don't want me to talk on social media about them because there's so many illegal things that i think that were happening there so at this point i'm just gonna let it go because you know i signed this paper i can't talk about it but at this point i just want to move on with my life and during this whole time i realized and god was showing me this that number one god is the one who did all of this for me he's the one who gave me the ideas he's the one that showed me how to defend myself and how to handle this situation number two when god tells you that's the house that you're gonna build and you say no <laughs> no because that is not like the right the right zoning thing or whatever it is i don't want to talk too much about what's going to happen here but he's going to say no he's going to say 
this is what I want and this is what you want and I wanted this other option there was another option that I wanted and I and I knew it was a better buy for my money than this little tiny house that I was getting and it turns out that that is what I'm going back for I'm going back to the option that God originally put in my heart that I talked myself out of because I thought it was better to do it the other way and it was a safer way and it ended up not being so I didn't do bad in the long run God blessed me tremendously because um, I got my money back and I got a good substantial settlement from this um, without having to go to court and spend court fees or attorney fees because I was able to present um, the court motion and all of that myself so with that said if you want to continue to follow me probably in the next two to three weeks I am going to start to do that with the, with the house build there are some things that are happening here on the property that are going to change a little bit but i don't want to talk about them i don't like talking about my future plans because i know that there are people out there who are jealous they're envious there are people who are um into witchcraft and sorcery and things like that and they want to put spells on things that god gives you to do and i won't be talking about those things until those things are already already planted to get done so with that said if you want to follow me it is going to happen here it is going to happen here but it's going to be on god's timing and god's way and i'm not going to rush those things so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up i hope you subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you next week bye bye <music>